it's one of those beautiful things that we can do over here. We mm. we take ownership of stuff and we 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 put our own spin on it. We don't just copy. We don't mm. copy. We we make it. We mm. make it our own. You know, and that and that's that's one thing with UK funky that I tried to do with my own stuff, and I can say it carries carried me to this point. Do you mm. know what I mean? Killer Killer podcast. Killer Killer official dot com. <laughs> You need the Kellervision app. 24-7 mini documentaries, podcasts, live shows, DJ live streams, top five, subscription packages, plus products for all your podcasts and street culture sports. Download it from the App Store for free today. Beatbox created. And we need to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Keller podcast. ITV without the ITV, man. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> I- IT Lee. <laughs> IT Lee, that's it. <laughs> Wait. Ladies and gentlemen, Killer Keller Podcast live at Effect Central London. As central as you should be, need to be, you care to be. What type of time in the week is this? You don't want to be anywhere else, surely. Big shout out to graffitikings.co.uk. Hold tight, everyone's got the television app. Need I say more? Free download Android and iPhone for all your street culture needs because people like us do things like this. We have inside the house. <sighs> The bits and broken pieces, the man himself, the producer, Uno Numero Uno, the Roscoe inside the place. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> yes, How bro. are you? I'm good, bro. I'm good. I'm good. Good to be back, man. Oh, we had an upgrade, eh? That's what I'm, listen, man. <laughs> I'm happy for you, bro, because, yeah, obviously within the 10, the first 10 pod- podcasts, man, so... Yeah, man, to see to see the upgrade and yeah. see you going at 200, what, 250? 250 plus now. That's yeah. amazing, bro. Honestly, that's amazing. That's amazing. We need to call it the, the something the something 10. You know, like the the, the famous five. Or like, yeah, yeah. This needs to be like the, the elite 10 or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah, you've got to think of a name for that, man, because that was, that was amazing. Like, I was literally thinking like, we, we, we touched on quite a few subjects in that, that last one, man. Yeah, exactly. But we don't want to talk about another subject right now because mm. we are going into some deeper, deeper stuff. And and they may not want us... They won't want to see the other one by the time we finish with this one. <laughs> but seriously, though, like, those first 10 were informative for me. And th- even into the 60s and 70s, it never stops. Yeah. You were saying just before, repetition is key. That's it, man. You've got to be consistent, man. Like, yeah. you know, I think that's... You know, I've been, I've been putting out music for 13 years this year. <laughs> 13 years. He spits me, he spits and, tea uh, you. What? Yeah, that's man. Mad. And like, you know, it's the consistency that's kept me as well because like, even like the first, my first like few releases, like I'd probably like question them now, but at the time they made sense. Do you know what I mean? Mm. But like, I think during the period of like when UK Funky emerged, I wasn't like the strongest producer out of the lot, but I was the one that consistently came with everything. So I think that's why I'm still here making Funky Oh, yeah, go, to that. this point, I'd like to beg to differ. For those of you who don't know about the Oscar man, <laughs> UK funky original, first generation UK funky for that man. You know, it's this, 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 this constant. One thing I love about your sound, and guys, go check it out on the Spotify or wherever you are. You know, Kicks and Snares Records, Rinse FM, X Rinse FM Finest. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, you've done a plethora of things. You know, tons of stuff. And yeah, yeah. It goes to show what uh, repetition can do, right? Yeah, man. You know, it's it's create creativity is endless, isn't it? Really, yeah. you know, when you if you if you can think outside the box and and uh, enjoy it, like mm. if you can enjoy it as much as you can, and 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 not see it as a job or or some sort of chore, mm. it becomes it becomes like second nature, man. You like mm. you live and breathe it, man. Um, you know, I can never, you know, I haven't had writer's block. Someone asked me, "Well, when did you have writer's block?" Like at least recently, and I was like, "I can't tell you when the last time I had nah. writer's block because I, I do it so frequently. Like, I make so fre- make the music so frequently. Do you know even what I mean? Imagine you having writer's block. It's just like nah. you, you like kind of. I feel like, correct me if I'm wrong. I feel like you've got your own boxes you know your own folders of yeah. just stuff yeah pre-programmed and you're just like click, 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 and you're just like go yeah yeah that's it i'm that's all right exactly, yeah it's, it's fun <laughs> yeah. like I, I make i make music so i there's periods where i'll make loops upon loops of ideas mm. for the days that i'm not able to think of whatever so i never have writer's block because i'm always able to elaborate on something that i've made mm. previously or yeah, and and what I do is I challenge myself. If I try and make, I go through periods where I make loops and just ideas mm. for those days, and then I'll go through. Or if I haven't got enough time, then I'll go through periods where I'll challenge myself and just make songs stop from start to finish. Mm. And I can do I can do that endlessly. So, you know, um, 
depending on what I'm doing or what's going on. I'm, during lockdown, I've been I, I haven't been able to make as much because I've got my daughters during the mm-hmm. week. Mm-hmm. Like in you know with you know when it, when school wasn't open, so mm-hmm. I wouldn't have been, I wasn't able to do anything. But beyond that, I can make like you know fifteen tracks in a week, man. Like, but. <laughs> Some don't come out. Do you know what I mean? What's like, the batting some... average? What's the batting average of, the, of a banger? Um, I'd say I'd say five of them, but then even then, it's like five out of every fifteen. I'd say are bangers, but I'd say I'd say most of them would be good songs mm. as well. Like so, even today I've done a session today, and um, I had fifteen songs ready for the singer, so I don't have to make tunes in the session yeah, if i need to i need to but more than likely there's there's at least one or two or mm. even four or five like the t- singer took five today she took five so we done one today we done two tracks um one of them was half finished and she took an extra four so you know that isn't basic not a lot of people do that st- i don't yeah, think enough it's fun like even today the session was fun i want i, I want to do stuff with like-minded people that just have fun and don't don't take this too serious do you get what mm-hmm. i mean because like we're in like a fortunate position to be making music as a living or as do you know what i mean as mm. the main whatever so it's like can't take it for granted do you know yeah. what i mean like I, I mean i come from like working background so I, as soon as i left school i was working so <laughs> to come to get to the point where i'm able to like leave work and make music mm. it's a fortunate life for me do you know what i mean it's like mm. now me not, and my mate arrow we say often say is like you know there is a builder's <laughs> job for us back in <laughs> 2002 yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> Me, me, me and my cousin, we used to we used to like be like, listen, if like there was a period where we was like, listen, if we don't get a job, we're going to the army. That was the that was the plan. We got to it was like you know within the year we no we 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 worked our ass off to get a job. Though. I, I tell you, dude, like I've, I love the fact that that the the working ethic always shines through. Yeah, you know, I think there's time for complacency when you're. I mean, I'm working class. Like to be in London, I'm I'm grateful I wake up in London. Yeah, yeah. And I know that sounds really weird. You know, I've been here fucking God knows how long, but but even now, I I still feel so appreciative of yeah. the fact that I can do this thing. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent, man. Yeah, man. Even London, it's London's. You know, it's not an easy place to live, man. It's not a cheap place to live as well. Mm-hmm. You know, so yeah, even to live here is good. You know, it's a blessing as mm-hmm. well. You know what I mean? Yeah. But well, you lived here for a while, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, You moved out now. You're in a nicer, you know, you're in yeah. a more humbling uh, spot, which yeah. I am absolutely loving abode. right now. But you... yeah, yeah. I mean, it was it was a good reason to like move out of London. You know, not too far. It's like out, still an hour, hour out. Easy. You know, it's not, Super it's not too. Easy. Yeah. So it's it's not far, but yeah, it definitely made sense to move out, get a bigger place for more bang for your buck, man. Yeah, Do man. You know what I mean? Well, so. Absolutely. Yeah, London and a lot of these major cities. Oh man, I was only talking to my friends the other day. It's like, yeah, what's the use? What's the deal? What, like, what is the flame to the moth? Yeah. What is it that <laughs> makes, especially in lockdown, you kind of come to a conclusion. It's like, well, okay, we're unlocked now. And for how long? We don't know. Yeah. But, but up until that point, it's like, well, we've got no nightlife. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> there's yeah. no, there's no one hanging about. No. There's no scene anywhere. No. What the fuck are we doing here? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You question it, man. You do question it. Do you question it. I can't lie, I've missed it. Like I literally, first lockdown, literally, I went went America, done like eight shows out there, come back, had a couple of weeks off. Then I played in Poland, and done two shows back to back in Poland. And it was lockdown. I haven't played in the UK <laughs> since wow. like night twenty nineteen now. Yeah, like early twenty nineteen. Oh my god! So you really because of lockdown, you were just yeah, like... yeah. I mean, most of it's weird because most of my shows were outside of the UK. Yeah, yeah. Like I never really like. It got to a point where I think like, you know how things work, it's cycles. So it's like, mm. you know, you'll be hot in one area or whatever, and then you're just cold and you got to, and you, you you gradually work in over mm. a couple of years or whatever. So yeah, it got to a sort of point, it was like, well, I'm doing an odd show here and there, but it wasn't like prominent enough for me to say, yeah, I'm, st- I'm still gigging and touring mm. in the UK. But yeah, most of my shows, America, Asia, yeah, they luck about that funky, see? That's it, man. I'm telling you. Especially in Japan, man. Japan's do they? my spot, man. Yeah. Yeah, man. We did a tune together. It was yeah, back man. In. Hey, really? listen. Yeah. We we'll we'll do, do another one. Do another one. Check out Toll Booth. Yeah. Toll, Toll Booth. Booth. Roscoe yeah. and Killer Killer. That's what I'm saying. That's that was true. off the first time we were here. Yeah. That's what? 2016? Roughly? Uh, it was 2000. Jews. Yeah. Actually, no, that was after we did the gig for um, in Glasgow. What was That's that right. Um, what was the name of that, that drink? I was trying to tell my missus about that drink. It was the rum. Um, 
It was, like it was a, a rum. It was a, it was a it was a rum and um, it was a rum. It was Cubanisto. A, that's it. Cubanisto. That was actually a decent drink. I was actually yeah. meant to get a crate of that, man. <laughs> it's the Is one. it still about? Yeah, you can get them a chip shop. Big shop, chip, chip shop, Brixton. Yeah. Yeah, you can get it there still. Yeah, solid. That was actually a decent <laughs> drink, man. That a bit was, naughty yeah, after like yeah. three of them bottles. All you needed was three. Like yeah. rum and beer. That's yeah, all. man. Anyway, um, so I can understand the uh, the broad appeal. Um, I put you in the same, respectively, in the same category as the EZs, the Stanton Warriors, the and 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 a handful of other elites that um, you have your lane. Yeah. And what's amazing about your lane, it, you won't, it, it's no faltering. Yeah. You know what you get? And it's so hot. Goldie, another one as well. Yeah, Goldie's you, a G, you, man. Big up Goldie. You man. know what I mean? Yeah. All these, um, Wiley t- t- to the f- all the best sides of Wiley, I think. Yeah. You know, he, he, you also know what you're getting with him. Yeah. Uh, oh, man, it's like, there's no faltering. And, and I'm, I value that as yeah. a consumer yeah, to know 100%. that I'm getting that. Yeah, what it says course. on the box, I'm getting. Yeah, of course, of course. You know what I mean, that's it. Like I always say to people, you know, especially uh, musicians starting out, it's like find find where you where you where you find your foot in music and find where you feel you you fit in and what you can bring to the table. Because you know, you find that a lot of artists they'll they'll bring the same thing that's already there. It's mm. like it's like bringing like coleslaw to the to the barbecue and someone has already bought coleslaw already. Do you know what I mean? Why, why are you bringing that for? Bring something different, yeah. so we can, so we know what you're about. It's mm. like you know, and I think, I think, I think I've done that well. And um, oh yeah, and you've done the, that all, well. All the people that you mentioned, Stanton Warriors, um, EZ, you know, Wiley, um, Goldie, like all stamped their name in British music yeah. in a way that you know they will never f- be forgotten. And mm. like I look at that, and like even for myself, that's something that I would love to be, you know, remembered by. You know, like. I, I, that that's kind of done. That's set yeah. in stone already. But you know, it's but you. But sometimes you know, I think especially now, in that when they was coming through in like the noughties and the mm. early, you know, and uh, you know, and the nineties, the late nineties, whatever. It's like, I feel music was consumed so much better than you know. It's like, you know, you knew you know what an EZ you, like EZ stub plates from then. Like you, I remember them. Do you know what I mean? And then you got you know Wiley's tunes from like two thousand one, three, even ninety nine, and stuff. Big up Zed Bias as well. Yeah, Zed course, Bias. Yeah. Gee, what a G man! You know, a funny story. Yeah, <clears throat> ah, actually, we love a funny story. So two thousand and six, yeah. MySpace days. Yeah, I yeah. messaged him. I was like, oh man, like I'd love to remix. Um, he had this tune called Spare Ribs. It's like one of my favorite songs, like favorite tracks, garage tracks from there. It was like proper dark. Like it was on that cuff of being garage but dubstep as well right. and uh but it was two-step and i said to him i messaged him and said bro like, i need to i want to remix that and he he didn't he didn't respond and then he like then i started getting my name so 2008 i was like bubbling then end of 2008 started it was getting there then he hit me up like zed bias hit me up and was like i was like i need to remix spare ribs he goes before you remix that can you remix neighborhood and I was just like, yes. So obviously the first one come out in 99. Then 10 years later, 09, at my remix with um, Chimpo as well. Done a remix. Hot Tai Chimpo. <gasps> yeah. And so that 2009. And then, yeah, it's, it's, it's 11 years old, man. That remix is 11 crazy. years old. Can you believe that? But that, that remix done so much for me, man. So that was, that was an amazing time. And he, he remembers the... You know what it is? Yeah, it's like I proved myself... So he, he probably saw the email because I think I remember him saying that, yeah, he saw my message. But then two late year, three years later, two years later, I made a name for myself in order to warrant remixing that. Uh, do you get what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like, it's that thing of working hard, mm-hmm. you know, or based on, it wasn't even a rejection as such, but it was like, I was overlooked because if I didn't, imagine if I didn't work, mm-hmm. I would never have done that remix or never, if I didn't put, Necessary things in place to put that work forward. We're petitioning. Do you know again, what I mean? It? Yeah, it's consistency. Consistency yeah. is key, man. I I thrive off like every year. It's like a minimum of three releases a year for me. Minimum. Every year, minimum. Yeah. Oh, so if you're doing five to every fifteen, and how many fifteen you do in a week? <clears throat> Hardly any of them come out. Honestly, like. What's going but on? also, but also, <laughs> also, like I said, like that's on an average. So during lockdown, that obviously like diminished in terms yeah. of like I was doing homeschooling yeah, yeah, my, yeah. my two girls and I was doing so much more outside of music but 
But I was just like, hold on, you're, really, not, you're not about to like only release one this year, are you? No, you I know what? You know what? I'm, I'm, I'll, I'll give you this one. I'm, I'm actually releasing an album this year. So, uh, huh? yeah, yeah. So, I'm going to do an album this year. I've, it's, it's done, basically, but I just got to mix it and put yeah. it in place. But last year, I actually released a tune every seven weeks, roughly. Bro, I just year. remember seeing your reels going off. <laughs> you were going off. You were just on it. <laughs> so, with that, with the, with the reels, I was actually in the process of backing up my music. So I was, I've, I've still got my PC from Neighbourhood Remix and all those. So it's like 12, 13 years old, that that PC. Yeah, that's some money business. Yeah, so I was going through and I was bouncing everything off, putting the stems and then bringing it onto a hard drive. That was the plan. And then as I was doing it, I, like I was watching this this uh, YouTube video about like, so I was trying to work out how can I improve my engagement? How can I like like use... Instagram has to offer and what Twitter, you know what I mean? I just wanted like to improve you've got my... in your, within your yeah, arsenal yeah. to do. Yeah. So then uh, they was like, yeah, in, there was, this guy was talking about Instagram reels and I was like, you know what, let me check it out. So I checked it out and then I started doing reels based on, so I was, as I was backing up tunes, I was doing the Instagram reels based on that. So I was basically just killing two birds with one stone, yeah, backing yeah. up my music, doing an Instagram reel. So I'd store them, I'd back them all up. They'd all, they'll be in my drafts on IG. So every week I'd do one, and I was doing one. And then Backing I, up again. Yeah. And then, again, consistency. So consistency. I, I basically carried on doing that until it got to, yeah, it was time to move. So obviously I was in London all last year and then moved end of end of the year, beginning of the year, beginning of this year. So, yeah, I, everything got packed away. So, yeah, it was, there was no chance I was doing any more reels. But, yeah, that's... But you got them backed up? Yeah, everything's all backed up. Everything's that's all crazy. backed up. Yeah, Those I've reels seem to take longer than you think. They do. They t- uh, it's deceiving. Probably take about fifteen to twenty minutes to yeah. do. Like you got to chop it, make sure it's all right, and redo stuff. So yeah. Yeah, and there's some vanity fluffing and stuff yeah. like that. It's all like yeah. No, it's not right. Do it get, again. <laughs> get the right. Uh, get the right filter on. No, I'm not a filter guy. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not really a filter guy. Yeah. I'm pass the way past. Yeah. The <laughs> oh man. Yeah, I mean, yeah. um, let's get let's let's go back. Let's go yeah. back. So where where did the name come from? Where did where did it begin? What was the music? Why? What shaped your your journey? Like because for a lot of people, you know, yeah. this is a whole new. You know, they yeah, of course. Right. So. Um, so I was listening to a lot of grime, a lot of garage, two step, the darker side. So I was listening to dubstep before it's called dubstep, and then I was making a lot of grime as well at the time. So this is like two thousand and four, two thousand four or five. But before that, I was actually making, I was actually rapping and MCing. So I was on, I was on a hip hop vibe for a bit. You know what I mean, so um, it's like what I was mentioned before actually. So I'll, I'll I'll delve into that as well. So like when you mentioned about Blue Note. And um, yeah, my uncle was a sound engineer at Blue Note. Um, Blue Note was very, very, very well established uh, yeah. venue in in Old Street. Oxton. Yeah, man. There, yeah, man. So, Legendary venue. Yeah, man. So that's heads. so. I, so my uncle, he was a sound engineer. So one time he said, "Yeah, I've just got a set up, and then and then I'll, and then we'll go." So I was young, man. So I, I had no idea, but I just knew that Blue Note was he, he's he's his venue where he would go to and and he, it was it was his iconic venue man yeah. so so how old were you at that time man i must have been about eight or nine man literally i was young so he was we went he was going there to set up then we'd come home and that was kind of my first taste of like figuring out what i wanted to what where i was gonna go and uh, it was like instilling like music, and I was always music was just it just followed me throughout all like my younger years. My my dad he was um a sound, he was he was a sound man, um and they and my uncles as well they were in they were in they had a group called Ecstasy in in um based in like SE like Deptford, Ecstasy the band Ecstasy. No, I don't I don't I'm not hundred percent sure. They was group. No, it wasn't a rave group. It was like reggae roots and stuff like that. So it was more like. On that sort of vibe and and, bells are. and uh yeah man I, I I didn't really like dig into too much, but I knew they was literally like it was just a sound thing and and every party was literally the the big speakers out everything, so that was kind of my first early taste of just music man, and like just yeah. just being a part of it, do you know what I mean and Damn, then hell yeah <laughs> and then and then uh and then my uncle he had his own studio in in Nunhead, which is like just off Peckham. Um, and uh, yeah, man, every weekend, man, most weekends when I was a teenager, I'd just sit in the corner, man. I'd just sit in the corner and just listen to. Just absorb. What, yeah, just watch the session, watch the session unfold. Um, sometimes it weren't even a session, it was just a link up, man. Everybody was just, but I would sit there and just be 
like in awe mm-hmm. of like just being part of like something that's just like, you know, I didn't know what it was going to turn out to be. And then I kind of started finding my own feet with with music and where, where like what I wanted to do, what how what I wanted to hear. So I was listening to a lot of Garage and my cousin, he introduced me to like Jungle, um, uh, you know, Brocky, Det, you know, Skibber. Like that was my, you know, growing up listening to those and then, it was Garage, you know, Luck and Neat, mm-hmm. um, Heartless Crew, mm-hmm. uh, Pay As You Go. Like through that, I was, I was, you know, I was growing through, you know, all of that, man. Yo. You know, um, and then, then I, st- then we started, then I started emceeing, and the names we used to like when we was younger, we used to just make random names up. Like, What's your just, name? <laughs> it was Ros- It was Roscoe. It was always like so. It started off as men- Mentor. I don't know why I call myself Mentor for, but I was, I was like, my bars were like. They weren't like negative in any sort of way. So mm. I guess that would, it kind of played a part in it as well. And then it was Mentor Roska. And that was the name. We just kind of, and then I was like, you know, I'm just going to go with Roska. And then I changed it to Roska. And then. But that, what does Roska mean? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. It was just like, it make a rough. name up. It does, innit? It, it was sounds like, good. It's like, yeah. it's rememberable. It's super memorable. Yeah, man. We just, I just come, I just, we were just making names up out of the blue. Yeah. What are we like? <laughs> So that was it. And my, my cousin, he went under the name Metro. So he was my DJ at the time when, when I was emceeing. And then, oh, that's a cold combo. Uh, yeah, man. Roscoe and Metro, man. And then we, and then we, we and then after, and then after that, I think my cousin, he just kind of stopped um, DJing and went kind of more into work. And then I was kind of still making beats. So I kind of stopped emceeing and started making beats. Like we done one show together. As you were talking, I was like, do I know heard on Roscoe Metro? It sounds almost like two. <laughs> we done we done, we we didn't really do like crazy stuff. Like we done we was on this radio station in um in where was it? It was like Car Sholton. It was like way like because we live we moved to uh, Fulton Heath yeah, and then so. we got we got on a train um and then we went on this radio this, this radio station that was in the back of this um this uh, record shop and then. After a while, like, um, yeah, they, they had a show. They had an event they was putting on. Um, mm. It was like they had like a side room on cookies and cream in Scar- in Scarlet. Yeah, hold tight cookies. And if you know, you yeah. know. <laughs> so we we was like literally like, it was like, a, like um, what was the name of the station, man? But yeah, we had this literally. It was like we had like the main foyer bit. And that was our first like taste of like. The foyer live. in Scarlet? Yeah, you know the yeah, main yeah, bit as you course, go in? Yeah. yeah, there's like, there's, they usually have, sometimes they yeah. have like a set up there. Yeah, yeah we, we played there, man. And that was it. That was our thing. So. We done that and that was our first taste. And then we kind of like, I think we just didn't know. I didn't know what, what happened. We kind of just like parted ways like yeah. slowly and he went into work. I went to do my thing and then I just carried on making music and it was just there. And then, um, and then yeah, then I started listening to like Funky House and mm. Broken Beats. And then that was, that was it from 2006 onwards, man. It was just, yeah. That was it, man. It's just crazy. building us to get to that point, man. Yeah. I mean, it just sounds like you... You had such a a life in music before yeah. you even were like, oh, you yeah, know, I'm gonna do that. <laughs> it was yeah. like it, it was like each component was like a a, a muscle. Yeah, 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 hundred percent, hundred percent, man. It was, you know, it it it's a it's it's been like a good journey up up until this point to get to to find where I want to be and like right. and build on something that's and especially like UK funky at the time when it first emerged, like because it emerged off. Like funky house and grime, broken yeah. beat, calypso, yeah. like a lot of like Caribbean music, and then, you know, yeah. to kind of find where I my own sound and mm. kind of make it make take ownership of the sound and mm. and, and stamp my, do you know what I mean? My yeah, authority the, on the whole scene and genre, man. Um, couple of things. Yeah. The the sound of the day, at the moment. I mean, you just where the studio is situated here. You know, you open yeah. the window and. One in six cars is playing something that's reminiscent of holiday music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, of like course. Like unapologetic, quite cheesy. Yeah, you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. Club Tropicana meets, <laughs> you know what I mean? Some g- g- garage music. Yeah, and, yeah. And do you ever feel like, uh, yeah, that's kind of like, uh, do you think, A, it's a, it's a modification of something that you know as to be in existence? 100%. Do you embrace that? Is that like a thing that, because it seems to me like, yeah, my guy's been doing that for a long time. Yeah, 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 <laughs> do, of course. Do you, know I mean? you know what? Like music, music evolves, man. And um, one, one of the good things about the UK that we've done over the last four well, feet forever is yeah. take ownership of a genre 
and make it our own. Take really make it our own. It's the best bit about British music. One hundred percent. You know, when you look at all the all the music, even like drill. You know, mm. based in Chicago, we've brought it over and and made it our own. Hold tight. All the original drill is like, pff, yeah, most cutting edge it's, shit. It's right amazing. Yeah. It's amazing, man. Like the beats, man. The producers that are making these beats, the engineers, man. The flows on them. It's the just... flows are sick. <sighs> yeah, man. So it's it's. It's one of those beautiful things that we can do over here. We mm. we take ownership of stuff and we, we we put our own spin on it. We don't just copy. We don't mm. copy. We we make it. We mm. make it our own, you know. And that and that's that's one thing with UK funky that I tried to do with my own stuff. And I can say it carries carried me to this point. Do you mm. know what I mean? Mm. Um, you know, it's got it's it's been a blessing to um, be a part of a genre and be able to do my own thing and be and and people to be able to point me out as in for what I've done and what I'm doing mm. um, you know the music you know um, even with my label as well you know um, you know it's like 130 releases deep now um, we've done not a simple thing to do neither nah no, like man for real. you'd be surprised I do it all myself as well man That's, all myself literally. and you know what you yeah. know what it is when 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 they don't tell you how hard it looks yeah. you're making it look easy which means you're doing it right yeah exactly exactly yeah man <laughs> But yeah, it's been good. Like you know, watching artists go from just starting out to being able to tour and do their own thing. You know, from like we've got like Murder He Wrote, DJ Polo, um, DJ Mo too. You know, and be able to put on nights as well. You know, with prior COVID, you know, mm -hmm. like put on nights, put these guys on, and and uh, help people build their careers, man. Because one of the one mm -hmm. one of the one things that I, which which I was fortunate to have was you know people that were interested. In helping me as well, you know. Um, uh, I remember talking to Friction, um, D and B Friction, and um, yeah, yeah. And uh, I remember when he when I first met him, and he was like, um, he said, um, Zinc put me onto you, man. And I was like, no way. He said, yeah, Zinc said, watch out for you, man. And Bro, those like, bingo beats amazing. for the one. Zinc was a massive influence, man. Like his tunes, the broken, the breakbeat kind did of. Did you do that pussy old tune? Yeah, he did. Pussy yeah, old. yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> Cause he had these, he had these white labels with just like um, Nike TNs on there. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. yeah. Just, like, just well ahead. So good, man. So yeah, like you know, being able to be, you know, for the for the elites to mm. be able to hear me and know that I'm here is, you know, at such an early point in my career was was definitely. Do you know what I mean? One. And that's yeah, kudos to production. Um, what else happened to? I feel like there's a. When, like you were saying about the British music scene, yeah, embracing creative, almost like it's re-exportable. Like you mentioned with drill, yeah, we're kind of throwing it back at them yeah, a little yeah. bit, and then to the point where they're thinking it's out. Right? Yeah, 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 of course. Um, and he, he, here's here's the conundrum because to a lot of people that are watching this, particularly musicians or producers, because produ producers at best are like that. If mm. it ain't for the timekeeping of a producer, us artists would be fucking way back. <laughs> <laughs> like, you guys are on it. <laughs> but it takes that regimented attitude. And I think for a lot of people, the, the, it's either one or the other. It's like overly creative yep. and losing perspective of time. Or it's like super on time, but not entirely creative. Yeah, it, yeah. It's a real hard balance That's with right. the industry, isn't That's it? That's it, yeah, it is. It is. I think um, you have to find... I think you, you have to treat music like a business but know when it's time to have fun mm. but know when it's time to be serious as well and it's a hard balance especially for you know if you stay in a creative like you know I've always said like if you're a creative you're a weirdo because we're all weirdos we've all got something that someone goes what <laughs> like do you know what I mean they look at you like what the fuck are you doing yeah. but that's that's part of that's part of us being creative mm. do you know what I mean and um, yeah it's hard you know I feel I'm, I'm fortunate because I feel like you know, I went because I went to work as well. I got and I was managing a team of eight, so I kind of got that manage managerial mindset in terms of time management, um, day management, and just managing what I need to do. Managing artists, record yeah, labels. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, so it's that level of organization. You know that you know not everybody has, and you know that's when you you know I could do a session with someone and be like, <laughs> "Where are you? Do you know what I mean?" Based on just because I'm so used to being punctual, I'm I'm so used to being on time for work, I'm you know, and doing all these things and All know. right, then listen to lesson one oh one of Roscoe. Okay. So uh, bullet points? 
be there 15 minutes be on time <laughs> <laughs> now you know what it's, it's I, I, I get it because not everybody you did mean that by the way <laughs> <laughs> I was actually on time today as well so yeah yeah you was ahead of me yeah, right? yeah come on man you had time to go get some fish and chips <laughs> yeah, yeah that's tight. it man so yeah no it's, it's, it's one of those things that everybody's got their own characteristics and it's like you know you you, you just have to just be relaxed mm. in that moment do you know what I mean and not take it you know learn that everybody's got their own way of doing stuff and you know what you might deem as weird is absolutely normal to that next person. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. So, that's the best bit about music. Yeah, that's it. Exactly, exactly. You know, when you look at like someone like Kanye West, for instance, he, you know, beyond his outside activities, musically, he's a genius. And I bet but, he's the best fun in the studio. I'm not even joking. Um, he bass. probably is. I mean, he probably yeah. gets the best out of every artist like, in some sort of way. So That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I'm telling you, man. Um, I think producers make the best... DJs, okay, spicy, all right. Don't <laughs> quote me on that next month, all right. I'm just thinking in terms of punctuality and showing up, professionalism. Yeah. It's like you guys, you producers. Yeah. I mean, for radio shows like Rinse, like yeah, you don't yeah. just hold down a, 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 you know, a station position like that for fucking however long. You know, yeah, these yeah. things, you got. They take. They take long. Trust. And you know what though? I would. I would contest that and say. DJs are better DJs than producers. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know why? Because Go we've got like, I feel like they hear, like, so if you put a DJ that's not a producer to produce, mm. th they would know what they want to hear, but not know how to execute it. And it's because they're ear, they know what they want to hear. Like, like a chef. Yeah. No, not so like, like look at the, look at EZ. Yeah. Hands down, you could arguably say he's the best DJ in, in the UK. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you get what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yeah. not a producer. But give him a set of headphones and he'll know what... He'll know what he wants to hear. Do you think that's why people like Stanton Warriors have this beautiful balance of yin and yang? I think so, yeah. Mm. I think so. Chemical Brothers. There you go. Basement Jacks. Yep, yep. So you've got it's to have balance. Both. Yeah, it's a balance. Yeah, it's a balance. I... I I felt like when I started, so I was, I was a producer first, then I started DJing and it was like, but I've always wanted to DJ because my cousin was my DJ, but when he wasn't DJing, I was on these decks. The corner, Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Quick mix here and there. So I knew how to mix, but mm -hmm. being able to hold down a set in front of thousands of people, it's like, it's a different, do you know what I mean? It's mm -hmm. a different. So it's one of those ones where, you know, you have to know, do you know what I mean? What? what the crowd want to hear, how you're going to execute tune by tune mm. and how it's going to... And that's, and that's the art that someone like EZ... You could give EZ two different tunes, man. Mm. And he, could, he, could, he could show that dance then, yeah, no time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, that's, and that's, that's the art. And I feel like DJs have that edge, mm. if I was to say. Because I would say that I'm a producer first and a DJ based on... Mm my production but obviously i know how to dj <laughs> like, like you know again you know just speaking privy of yeah. hearing you yeah yeah of course of course oh man like again that you take you take your you're very intuitive and you take your 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 music takes people to places yeah and i think a lot of that is the rhythms yeah it's the selection and it's the and it's the mood it's yeah it's the genre as well yeah like it's dance it's danceable man it's like you can't not dance to it. It's, I've, I've the met ladies people. Love you. They're ladies, man. They love. <laughs> yeah, they love yeah. the funky. Listen, man. Yeah, you. That's the one thing I've learned about about funky, is that it's just one of those genres that you, even if you don't know the songs, you, you will dance to it, mm. and 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 it's been like that forever. And I think that's why I still continue to make it, and I still like. I haven't moved to another genre or tried to be you know, skip to another genre or make and, you know, try and make myself in that. It's not it's just not me. Mm. I'd rather just continue doing what I'm doing. It's not broken. Do you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Um, and I'm not trying to, uh, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to chase the latest trend. I don't really believe in that. I feel, I feel like if you can make something in that genre or that place and be consistent at it, you can live beyond that genre, mm. you know? That's why, do you know what? I envy the DNB scene, you know. <laughs> you know why? Because it's such, a, and in a, in a positive way, because it's like, yeah. they, it's, it's forever. Yeah, yeah. Like that, that, that genre 
will never die. Never ever die. It will never it will never fizz away because it's such a tight knit scene. Mm. I don't know how the relationships are in general with everybody, but man, it's like from the outside looking in, the consistency of the clubs, the club nights. As an organism. It's, as everything. Yeah. It's just it's a heartbeat, man. Mm. And it's everything. Everybody's pumping into that same heart. You know what? And the interest, yeah, you're absolutely right. And the other thing that's entertaining is the idea that uh, it's a selfless act of making production to the highest level. Mm. If someone wants to knock on the studio door of any one of those drum bass producers and all you're seeing is them tweaking this snare, and you're like, what are you doing that for? It's like, why not? This is, this is my art. Yeah. Go away. You know? yeah, yeah. They're not thinking of the money, they're thinking of contributing. It's like yeah, this man. thing, isn't it? That's it's, what I'm saying. The levels are high, the quality's high. You know, it's 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 amazing to watch, yeah. you know. It's like it's one of those things you'd want for every genre, do you know what I mean? As in a high level of contributors that that care about the engineering, the sound, the quality, the and you know, the promoters that want, you know, well actually pay the pro the producer, mm. pay pay the pay the artist to play and you know, and uh and keep the consistency of 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 the sound, man. But there is that in UK funky. This is a <sighs> it's hard to like so I'm in a fortunate. I'm in a way fortunate position where, like, you know, pre-COVID, where, like, I can play pretty much anywhere, because of I feel like my consistency and what I've done for music has kept has kept has kept me mm. at a level where I can go most places. Um, it's like even Japan. So I, I I go Japan on average once every eighteen months. I go Japan. Yeah. 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 Um, I was meant to go. Uh, last June as well, man. That would have been sick. Sick. I literally drop a drop of a text and I'm there. And um, and and uh, I've been going there for like t ten years. So get going there and being consistent and showing, you know, proving myself. And then they go and research and build. And then I get to the point where I'm actually making music videos and music with the artists and linking up with them. Building a fan base, man. Wow, and you'll get, you'll Do you know what I mean? There face but to it's face like, it's, it's, yeah. it's a, it's a one-man fan base. Mm. It's not a genre fan base. Do you get mm, what I mean? Mm, mm. I'm not building a fan... It's like, because there's no one... No one that... All the people that were at my level making Funky, no longer. Well, they don't make it no more? No, they make everything. So you've got people making house um, or DJing house. Most, most of them moved to house. Which is each to their own, of course. Yeah, of course. No, 100%. No, I'm, I'm who cool is it? with that. Who, 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 um, who out of the people that did do the departing of yeah. the genre, do you think, oh, man, I wish they were still doing that? Um, doing UK Funky? I, 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 I'd hope a few of them. I feel like... I don't want to really name any names as such, but I feel like... I feel like sometimes the grass ain't always greener. Do you mm. know what I mean? As in, like... Because you've you got know, to reset... You got to reset. You got to start again. But the good thing about starting again, especially when you're in music, is that wherever you start again, you go with the tools that you didn't have on the time that you started the last True. time. So that's that's always the benefit of it. But it's like sometimes, have you ever seen that meme on on online where there's two people and they're digging. One's close to getting the diamond. Mm -hmm. One's got the diamond, mm -hmm. and the other one is close to getting the diamond. But instead, because he sees that guy getting the diamond, he goes into his tunnel to go. Mm -hmm. And it's like, mm -hmm. that's how I see music. Sometimes you're only one track away from being yeah. where you want to be. But then because you saw that guy successful over there, you think is you think that's the route. Facts. That's truth. And that's and that's and that's 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 from experience of watching. Mm. I learn I learn from people I learn from people's mistakes, other people's mistakes. Mm. Because I don't I don't want to make that same mm. do you know what I mean? That's why I, I do things like even now. I mean, I've just like only the last three years I've started like delving out to other genres a bit more. So, like, um, I make dancehall music as well. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm I was up here. When was I up here last? Uh, a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. So um, I was with uh, Big Zeke's. Mm -hmm. Shell um, they got like crew Shellington High Road. I've been making dancehall with those guys, and it's like I gradually got to Shellington that point. High Road. Bad. Trust me, check them out, man. Oh, I'm telling you. That sounds telling like you. the kind of Northwest that, man. Gym fodder that. I'm going to in. Trust me, check check them out, man. Like I'll I'll send you a link yeah, to this. Yeah, do, 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 I'm do. telling you. So I hit I hit those guys up um about two or three years ago, like 
because I started making dancehall and I was like, I've got some dancehall here. Do you want to hear it? Mm-hmm. And then they, and you know, sometimes you can send a DM and you know, you don't hear nothing. Do you know what I mean? But you know, he, they responded. And so I've been making dancehall, but I got to a gradual point where I started making like funky that sounded like dancehall as well. So it had like, you know, the kind of the same feeling, um, but obviously as a 130 mm. BPM tempo. So I started working with Cerasy. So that was my For guy, man. Real? Yeah, so. Ooh. We linked. It was funny because we used to see each just other. Dropping them today, bro. Yeah, <laughs> man. Seriously, my guy, wow. man. Like, Wicked. you know, like, um, you know, we became really good friends. Like after making the track, uh, one of our tracks in 2017. But yeah. we always, I used to always see him a toddler. He'd be like, yeah, like we'll make tune or we'll link up or whatever. Big up toddler, by the way. Yeah, man. Big oh, up tight. toddler. So yeah. yeah, man. We kind of got to that point, and then we made him. We made a track together, and he's four years old, literally this month as well. And um, yeah, so he. He, um, I gave him the track and he said, yeah, I've done the track. And I was like, he was like, okay, cool. And I said, I'll mix it and everything. And um, I'll send it back. And he said, yeah, cool. He goes, I'm going to Trinidad. Like you're going to Trini Carnival. Every year we go to Trini Carnival. So he um, he said, I'm going to film a video out there. I was like, yeah, go for it, man. Oh, madness. So he filmed a video for yeah, it. Yeah. And and that was like my first like sort of like dance all infused funky thing. And then it, it kind of like made, open the door for me to kind of get more in making more dance all yeah. and, and bashment and stuff like that. So that was kind of like, a nice little sort of transition rather than yeah. me going, right, making dance all now. Do you know what I mean? See you later. Yeah, exactly. Mm. And I think like I'm at a good position in, in my music where I can branch out a little bit where it's not really too regimented for me as well. Mm. Sometimes, you know, as a musician, you you dot around and do too much. You confuse. And you can dilute, you dilute things. This well, is it. And like this you say, it. if you go, if you really eat, you don't even need to get so far as you as close as your friends. You can go way back and you can see the... You can see the fault lines of where people have made a decision mm-hmm. that they can't go back from. That's right. That's right. I I've think s- we all can make those decisions. Hundred percent, man. I mean, we've all we've all turned a corner at some point and think, oh, do you know what I mean? Maybe mm. could have done something different or switched up, or maybe I could have done that later, or maybe not at all. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, in that in that respect, and coming up from, you know, a family of 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 in the music industry and yeah. artists, do you do you see? Particularly like doing a specific genre like you do, mm-hmm. do you see the vulnerability of of such being an artist or in the music industry? Because you know these to a lot of people that are watching, they've got nine to five. Salute the nine to fivers all day. Mm. Um, they will definitely be listening to this saying, "Yeah, this is all good, but ain't you guys worried at all?" You know, we've mm. just come out of a mad lockdown. Yeah, and, yeah. And check, fuck it. Like as I was saying beforehand, yeah, you know, we we we're the lucky ones, you know. Yeah, yeah, of course. But um, it can be quite vulnerable, can not it? Yeah, it can. It can. Sometimes it's a lonely road, man. Yeah. It's like especially when you're, you know, um, trying to pursue something and take it serious and mm-hmm. get certain places. You know, it's 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 a tough road, man. It does does get tough. And it's one of those ones, you know, you got to learn to take the rough with the smooth, man. Mm. Um, in all in all aspects of it, man. You know, whether it's whether it's criticism for your whatever you're doing, or yeah. or whether it's just you know, on typical like what we mentioned before about like online, you know, personas and hate mm. and you know, people, the way people respond to things and people the way people take social media, man. Mm. So it's, yes, yeah, people are a lot more. Um uh, elusive and a, and a lot more free with their fingers and stuff these days and yeah and you <coughs> excuse me not even so much like it's not even so much people you don't know even some people you do know yeah no like, yeah hundred yeah, percent oh, you're right man are you you good you good <laughs> yeah you know? yeah it's crazy man it's crazy just watching how people sort of like react and do stuff on the net man like I, yeah good. I've taken a step back on the net man like I I do as much as I can but I just try and see in the real world man do you know what I mean mm. I feel like sometimes like you get locked into just what is, what's not real. What's, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, I mean, I guess yeah. it's the future as well. Like, and I, I'll take that down to me being maybe just, you know, not even out of touch as such, but more, you know, I say blessed to be, to know the world without the internet. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I do know what you mean. So I think we're the last generation to know. Man, <laughs> my daughters have both got iPads, man. And it's like, if you, if they say, if it's not an iPad thing, it's the TV. Like they, this, but they, it's like, <laughs> you know, it's like when you say no to both, they don't know what to do with themselves. Yeah. It's like you got a stack of toys in your room, man. That's yeah. all we had. You know Don't what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yeah. it's 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 quite funny to see that generation like in full effect and actually in front of you, like living. Because mm. you know, think about like I was think I was, I was saying this to my missus, like you know, like TV, mm. like 
like watching watching a cartoon on a Saturday was like it was it was like after the news and before like the game shows, yeah, on like normal like on say your ITV, yeah, 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 like. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now it's on demand. So they can just go, yep, psh, I'm watching Pokemon today. Do you know what I mean? It's crazy. Yeah. It's actually yeah. crazy. But the when thing is, watching... we kind of dig it too. Well, we, we are the we, prize. Obviously, we have our... Yeah, that's right. What's that saying from... What's they called? Manic Street Preachers. What the, Their famous lyrics is, if you tolerate this, then your children will be next. Ooh, uh, they... Yeah, I didn't, yeah, I need to check that tune out, man. You that's know what actually, I'm talking about, though. You no, know. I probably do, but I don't know the... If what's... you tolerate this, then your children will be next. Oh, is that... A, I didn't know the lyrics, man. I oh, know, it's cold, Mad. right? And and there is an irony well, to that. They're in the future, man. Jeez. Yeah. <laughs> that's mental, Sung that Sung in my worst possible beatbox way. <laughs> Put a white tune on that. <laughs> <That's> a... <laughs> you know what to do, producers out there. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but no, nah, for real. Like the the it's written, isn't it? The yeah. the way that the way that we perceive stuff now is man made. When a lot of the things that we got kicks out of as kids, they were just kind of human nature, isn't it? Nintendos and that shit were there, but yeah. they really were only for people that could afford it. We, exactly, exactly, <laughs> man. Exactly. I mean, I had I had um, I remember getting the Master System. That's like, the deal, yeah. But I got it so late. So the first Master System had Alex Kidd built yeah. in on it. <laughs> Bro, I got mine so late. I had Sonic the fucking Hedgehog on mine. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I had literally. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I know those. I was ones. just like, damn. So that... and you're already waiting for the 32 Mega Drive. Oh for, come man, on, come I wanted for... the Mega Drive, but the Master System would do, man. Yeah. I was just happy to have something, man. But yeah, I got mine late, man. Mm. But like. Even that, I didn't. I don't remember playing it every day. I don't remember being like so. Yeah. On it, do you know you. what I mean? It was like you was out either outside or, do you know what I mean? You done, you know, playing, get, playing toys, man. Mm. Using your imagination. Do you know what I mean? And I do often think to myself, wow, well, what would a twenty-one-year-old me do if I was like sitting there with the option to watch anything in the genre of my choice that I'd never had the opportunity to do? Eighteen. Oh man, there you I go, eighteen, 18. or Night Rider, eighteen no. and Night Rider were my, my shows, you know. <clears throat> Maybe some Airwolf. Airwolf. I never really got into Airwolf. You really? Know? No, no, I didn't. See, the thing is about Airwolf was it was it was like the, the constant battle of well, who's going to win? Is it Night Rider, Street Hawk, or Airwolf? It was always this kind <laughs> yeah, of uh, yeah. I mean, so you know, they're measuring up on round for round. I don't know. I was kind of on an Air Force. <laughs> Airwolf, yeah, man. Tip. Yeah, but you know what I'm saying? It's like yeah. the, I think a lot of things lead, lead, lead set adrift. The idea of imagination. That's right. You know, we used to fill in the blanks back in the day. That's you know? right. That's right. You you know, you, you'd literally use, you'd think about things and just make up things, man. But yeah. I think now it's like, <laughs> if it's not, if it's not, if it's made up, it's not real, man. Literally, yeah. we want to watch, we want to watch what's on now on TV, on Netflix or. And I don't think it's our age, you know what I mean? Because. No, I think it's, it's the whole world. It's the whole, it's world. whole world. world. Yeah. But it's mad watching the kids do it, like. You know, growing up, that's mm. that's all they know. That's all they know. We know, we know different. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So there's a couple of things that I watched recently. I got into one of these wormholes. You know this new dark, the, the new dark, dark crystal. Yeah. Right. So they've got a, on Netflix. Oh, hell up, hell, Netflix for this one because yeah. it's so sick. Um, they got the making of the new dark crystal. Oh really? Bro, like, you know, sometimes when you've got the CGI, it's shit. Yeah. Because your your mind doesn't fill in blanks. Yeah. But when you're working with puppets, the whole another game changer. They add little details of CGI and that's not right. too much. Yeah, that's 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 the best that's the best mm. set, man. Mm. That's the best set, yeah. And the same with Mad Max, they're making it the, the uh, Fury Road. Oh, is there a making of that? On what, on, on YouTube. Is it? I'll Crazy. check that out. I'll like, check that out. Each car is like and I think for a producer or a creative it's like that oh, they really did that. They really used the, the crossbow on the gear stick of the, the, the you know what I mean it's yeah, these yeah. things no I'm going to check that out yeah I love watching things that are relatable to the craft that you're in yeah you know what I mean because in a weird way I don't know about you you can kind of apply it into it in a weird regurgitating kind of way do you get what I'm saying yeah yeah of course of course yeah man so you know where where do you go when you've got like all right these ideals in your head of like, oh yeah, this is that, this is this is the ideal, but then you're sitting there with a laptop full of gear and you're just like, oh, it's all <laughs> in the box. Oh, right, so I can fuck with this and I haven't even got to think about it. Click, 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 click. I mean, technology now in the studio is... is it's mad. Mental. Do you know what though? A lot of, I use a lot of like software now. Like I used to use like a lot of hardware, but I think we're going on tour and then it's like you don't have it with you, you can't carry it with you, so... I found myself just using a lot more software. 
um, and getting like similar results or results that I felt were matched or closely to, do you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, which probably molded a lot of my sound. So yeah, I feel like it's having that balance. But once I've finished building my, my new studio, Oh, well, I know he's getting his studio going. It's, this is the I've already seen this. I've already seen the workspace. It's yeah. looking tough. It's looking good, man. So yeah, <laughs> hopefully, yeah, I'll, I'll probably get a bit more, bit more hardware, man, in there. Be spending a lot more time in Cause there. Because you sound like just you know going back to the Nintendo days and the the the, the, the Sega days. It's like there's there's sounds in within your stuff that is so organic. Sounds like it's outside the box. It's like I can't imagine. I mean, obviously sample packs are the way they are nowadays yeah. but like there's some real movement some uh, yeah some energy to them that I, I can't imagine being so simply in the box ready to go yeah you know what though it's like um it's about taking ownership of your of your samples and your what you use so like when i'm what i mean by that is that like i use like a lot of sample packs and bits and stuff that i like you know and it's about making it your own, making it sound unique, making it sound like you actually put effort into the tune as well. And, mm. you know, it takes time, you know, you know, you could, you know, just kind of making things sound that little bit different, you know, to the point where you don't want people to come up to you and be like, I know where that kit came from. Or That's like, the last thing you're on, isn't it? Man, <laughs> I would hate that. I would hate that feeling. So I make sure that all my stuff sounds got that level of uniqueness to mm. it. Yeah, there's probably a few bits that you probably go, if you if you've listened to all the sample packs or know the you know the popular ones or whatever or the popular sounds or popular plugins or whatever. You must scroll through some bits and you're like, oh, that's bait, that's that. That's it. Oh, I know where you got that from now. Yeah, you must have yeah, that. yeah, yeah. I think every producer's probably got really? that. Really? Yeah, hundred percent, man. Hundred percent, hundred percent. There's a few. There's a few things that are, like I've used like stock samples for like some things and you know, no one's used them yet. But no one's I fucking with toll booth, probably... by the way. No one's fucking with that at all. You know what though? Cyan Anderson on when she was on One Extra, she was playing it every week, man. Literally. Really? Yeah, she was, man. Because that's called all the unique sounds. Yeah. Like nothing else like, we'll, that. like when we do, we'll do another one, and yeah, we'll, we we'll, we'll put we'll put that on we'll put that on the flip again, like we yeah. release it with it, like yeah, we'll definitely do that. Man. You've always been on the side of me, brother, and I've always yeah. appreciated it because you know I remember when I was doing the new project, them and us. Yeah. You, you yeah, stuck, man. You done the remix with, for you guys. Yeah, man. You know you know fucking, come you know, on, man. Kind of, you just yeah. love doing stuff. Yeah, man. Listen, like I like working with good people. Mm. That's 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 what it boils down to, and it's like if you can work with good people. You know, it wait it outweighs working with people that you know act like they're above themselves, mm. act like they you know they you know they're above you and above everything you know, and and that's the most important thing. Mm, you know, yeah, you, I, feel, I get yeah. more kicks out of working with someone that that has the same feeling about music as me, mm. or has has done, or has, you know, you you've done so much in music, you know, yourself, and it's like, you know. Mm. You're a legend in music, bro. <laughs> You're a legend. So it's like working with you is like it's like a blessing. It's like. Um, I never forget like um, Zinc. First time I met Zinc, I was fucking starstruck, man. I can't lie because yeah, I, I, listened, kind of was I grew well, up right? listening to every, every tune. And uh, and then I remember when I was at Rinse, he was like, wait there. And I was like, I was I didn't know what to think. And then he come back and I think I've got the CD still. He gave me a, he gave me a copy of um, 128 Trek. So we had 138 Trek, which was the original. Uh -huh. Then he'd done the 128 Trek, which is the 128 BPM version of 138 Trek. Gave me on CD. I remember that. And uh, yeah, until this day, I was just like, it was like, I felt like I'd done, you know, it's like, you know, when you put so much work into your own, your own self mm. to get to a point where you're noticed, your people mm. reckon, like, you know, know what you do. You know, it's kind of like, it was like a certification yeah. to kind of feel like, you know what, like, I've got to a point where. I was buying Zinc's tunes to the point where he's actually given me his tune. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like, imagine that. Mm. It's like, yeah, it's it's, it's crazy. It's crazy feeling, man. It's like the small things like that mean mean more to me than mm. like um, than any sort of accolade or anything. Mm. Because it's like, you know, it's it's those those things you never think would happen or you know. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Oh, and bro, just going back to your analogy of of the, you know. Jumping, you're jumping off a ride that you don't know what the next t t turning is. This is it. Subject. And I think there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of self uh, realizing. Is that the right term? It's like you're 
you don't realise which move you make, how much energy and how much that takes out of you. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. then just one accidental watch of a video or tweak of something or a, a sound comes into your, you know, your your your, uh, your desk and you're like, oh, I get it now. But it took you like that many times to work. Yep. That's a lot of energy, isn't 100%, it? percent, man. Hundred percent. I just feel, you know, you you gotta just you gotta you gotta just appreciate the whole just the, music the journey, just, man. Yeah, the, the journey is the best part of the whole yeah. the whole the whole destination is the journey. Mm -hmm. And I think we, that's the real we destination. Yeah. That's it. Hundred percent, man. I, and and I, 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 I learned that from early. Like, just enjoy it. Enjoy the moment. Enjoy the moment. Like sometimes you you start thinking about the next thing, the next thing, the next thing after that. But it's like enjoy the moment. Enjoy that time that you. You know, you did this or you did that, and, and um, yeah, I've, I think that's why I've, I've like, yeah, I just, I just, I'm in a different sort of light in terms of like just what I've done and what I, what I can do and where I've been, you know. Mm. So it's like even during lockdown, it doesn't really, I haven't been affected by a lockdown as mm. such because I feel like if it was to stop today, I've done, I've done sick stuff do you get what i mean Dude, no, because i've enjoyed the journey it, yeah. like whereas those that haven't enjoyed the journey they would be writing off yeah. and thinking when's the next thing happen? when's the next thing happening mm. do you know what i mean yeah it's conversations like these that yeah i live in the moment and i'm just yeah. here like you know what i mean i'm with my guy he's like the most upbeat positive energy man sick I'm man like, never deviating from the 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 mission brief, always on it. That's it, man. That's it. I feel like if you don't live in pos some level of positivity, man, it's like, it's hard to progress. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's hard to like... Your you receptors know. are off. You got yeah, to yeah, them. man. And I feel yeah. that's, that's carried me a lot of the way, man. Mm. You know, it's, it's brought good people into my life that, mm. you know, that, you know, you can, you can be inspired by and, and, um, and, and take something away from, you know, mm. and give something back as well, man. Hopefully, like, you know, this, this, you know, this this pod will give, yeah, you know, I mean, someone some good inspiration, man, to do some good stuff as well. Comments man. below, you know what to do, come people. Come on, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Roscoe, man, I yeah, know you're, listen, I know you're busy, man, and I'm fucking, listen, as always, yes, as bro. always appreciate no, you coming no, through. No, honestly, bro, thanks for having me down, man. I know we was trying to get this working life for ages, but yeah. yeah, I was just working out when I could come down and, you know what I mean? And that, I was just like, no, I've got to come down because I know I was one of the early birds on the, on the pod, man. Yeah. So just to come back and bless it up again, man. <laughs> You get me, so yeah. yeah. Come on, man. You know what I mean. You know That's what I mean? the way it goes, and uh, you know, teas in the pot, drinks in the fridge. Yeah, Chip man. It down the road. That's it, man. That's yeah, it, man. Always, bro. Appreciate you. it, man. No, thank you, man. Honestly, wherever you are in the world, Ross is side the house. Come, Come on, on. Yeah, some learning and lessons. Like, we can take comment, away. share, and subscribe, man. <laughs> Come on, you know, he knows the drill. Yeah, you know it, do okay. Till next time, people. You stay lucky, Ross. You're a star. Come on, stay lucky, people. <laughs> Peace. <laughs> yeah man, wicked. Yeah, that was wicked.